shot. <laughs> she do the chin, the, the thoughtful look, you know, all of that. I think she's been dreaming about this for all her life and she already knew how she was gonna get down. <laughs> Charlene Pearson, aka Miss Juicy Baby, is known for living out her life as a little person on Lifetime's popular reality show, Little Women Atlanta. But nothing about the self-proclaimed queen of Atlanta is small. The bigger-than-life radio personality has an attitude to match Queen Charlotte from Bridgerton and can be lethal with her clapbacks. Ever since the show first aired in 2016, Miss Juicy has made an unforgettable impression, making enemies out of the late many and coming out with the most entertaining catchphrases ever heard on reality television. Everybody that know me know that my tagline is Miss Juicy, baby. Okay. On the show, we know her for her antics that make us want to clutch our pearls. Who can forget the episode when Miss Juicy met up with Minnie to let her know that she was stalking her and trying to be her? on some single black female ish to just downright stalkery. Hello. Hello, we're here. <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Gloria Altania. And I'm Betty Bima. And you're watching 10 out of 10 with the Pablum Partners. Yes, and today is sometimes super isn't natural. Okay, you got it, because I didn't think you was going to get that title at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, oh, I took my time with it. You saw me? You saw me? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> super isn't natural so our show is covering supernatural experiences from around the world so we're going to be talking about heaven hell ghosts all kind of stuff right Gloria? trinkets items that you might not land you know mm -hmm. so have you ever had a supernatural experience you know what um maybe physically no but i've always had like crazy dreams you know? Ooh, crazy yeah. dreams like what kind of dreams like i don't know sometimes it'll be like i'll have dreams and end up having deja vu because they end up happening or like i'll have like creepy scary dreams that startle me into waking up screaming <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a person of dreams. I'm telling you, I, I dream about the floozies in my life. Like there's some floozies <laughs> doing stuff behind my back. Like I don't know, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden I'll have a dream that he's talking to a girl. Like this one guy, I had a dream that he went to a Beyonce concert. And so I confronted him about it. I was like, you know what? I had the craziest dream that you went to a Beyonce concert. And then lo and behold, he was going to a Beyonce concert with somebody. What? <laughs> that's creepy mm -hmm. but it's also cool too though it's like okay i'm gonna write this down yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you feel me but you know what i what i remember um is when i have my scary dreams i always remember waking up uh and mom having us watch oprah oh yeah oprah always like took me out of that zone you know mm -hmm. i don't know why why why? Her voice is just so soothing. And I just remember staying up just with the blanket. Just that was in the nineties. Okay. When she had her show, right? Yes, I know. Thank you. Thank you, Oprah. 
<laughs> well, we better get the show kicked off, get get it started because uh, we got a different format going on. It's a little bit of storytelling going on this episode. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. School has always been a challenge for Nathan, especially being a young teen. It was difficult making friends. Despite all the challenges, Nathan found comfort in English with Miss Hawkins. She was kind, patient, and took a liking to Nathan and six others in his class. One day after class, Miss Hawkins calls Nathan over. Nathan walks up to Miss Hawkins' desk. You've been doing so well in class. However, I noticed some negative energy floating around you. Is everything okay? Oh yeah, Nathan replied. Hawkins stares at him to see if he's telling the truth. She's unconvinced. Well, I want you to meet me and the others at the park at six to release that energy. It will be a good thing that's needed for you, okay? Nathan didn't think twice and agreed. Six o'clock couldn't roll around quick enough. Nathan told his parents he was going to meet up with his study group and made his way down to the park in his small community. When Nathan arrives, he notices a fire burning and sees Miss Hawkins and his six other classmates standing by the fire. Nathan walks up to join everyone. Everyone, let's welcome Nathan. Welcome Nathan, says everyone else. We are here to release negative energy within us. And the only way to do so is by creating an exit point. Miss Hawkins slowly walks over to Sam. She grabs a small knife out of her pocket Miss Hawkins holds the knife up and jams the tip of it in her palm. Sam yelps out, Ah! That's right, let it out. Sam holds her hand in pain. Miss Hawkins grabs Sam's hand. Now we must seal the exit so the evil spirits won't re-enter. And Miss Hawkins brands Sam's hand. Nathan? Miss Hawkins calls out, step forward. Nathan was nervous. He didn't know what to do. He saw the pain that Sam went through. Miss Hawkins slowly made her way over to Nathan, but before she reached him, a cop car pulled up. Everyone ran away, including Miss Hawkins, but she was captured. Turns out, Miss Hawkins thought her students were infested with demons. Everyone in the group was afraid to speak up about Miss Hawkins, so she only got off lightly with six months in jail. <laughs> Teacher's pet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. isn't that crazy so okay with this story I was doing some research and I came across a you know an article about this lady in Florida who I guess her life was crumbling right so she was getting a divorce and she was just having personal breakdowns and then she ended up finding this uh, religious group and from that group, she started changing and thinking like uh, people had evil spirits in them. And so she thought her uh, students had demons inside them. And so she was just like, this is how you uh, get them out. Mm -hmm. And basically, she just had a mental breakdown, basically, uh, you know. So what's supernatural about it, though? She Because she joined a religious cult, basically. So you're saying that they made her like hallucinate or something like? Yeah, like, she was doing something where she just, her mind just like switched and she thought people had demons in them. So uh, that's supernatural, okay? If you feel like you know there's a demon present in somebody, yeah. that's supernatural to me. Interesting. So. It kind of reminds me of the movie Fallen with uh, Denzel Washington. Basically, oh. if, you, if you guys haven't seen that, it's a, it's a, it's a oldie but goodie. If you haven't seen that, that movie terrifies me because it's like, you know how people say angels are walking around among among us? Mm -hmm. Well, there's demons too, right? So if you believe in that kind of thing, you might be brushing shoulders with demons and don't even know it. No, Man, that's crazy. That's some freaky stuff, huh? It's crazy. Crazy mm -hmm. out in these streets. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see what else is on the countdown. Okay. UFO sightings have always been a thing dating back to the 1940s and throughout the Cold War. Within a span of two decades, over 12,000 UFO sightings were reported from places like Nevada, Florida, New Mexico, and West Virginia. With the excitement and intimidation of aerial phenomena that comes with each mysterious strobe of light,
Uh, are you guys seeing this? What is this? Robert Dest, there's something weird going on on the on the eastern horizon. Oh my gosh, what is that? Oh my gosh, I don't know. What in the heck is going on? This is something I've never seen. That is crazy. What is that? What is going on? Our alleged alien abduction. More and more people are joining the ranks of the Tin Heads when it comes to believing in the supernaturally extraterrestrial. Case in point, the Oimuamua introduced itself to planet Earth three years ago. The Oimuamua was first discovered by Canadian physicist Robert Rourke from a Pan-STARRS telescope in Hawaii on October 19, 2017. The first known interstellar object had already traveled toward and away from the sun by the time humans caught on. Surprisingly, the interstellar object was designed like a spacecraft. And while it appeared to be aimlessly floating through the solar system, scientists discovered that there was something accelerating the object. Harvard University astrophysicist Avi Loeb argued that there was an alien machine driving the acceleration of the craft, while other researchers argued that the surface of the craft was enveloped by solid hydrogen. But this theory raised suspicions as scientists pointed out that the spacecraft didn't follow the same orbit as other asteroids and comets. The Oimuamua simply entered the solar system and then left, as if someone was observing. Was it indeed alien technology or a spacecraft from another solar system? We have yet to learn, but it does pique conspirators' interest when the government announces that they are now taking UFO sightings more seriously. Lakovia is the name of this small village in Czech Republic, with no more than 708 people. If you're thinking Lakovia is pretty small, you're absolutely right. The best thing you can do when staying in this region is probably boating, diving, or taking part in local festivities. Or you could visit the abandoned St. George's Church if you're brave enough. The church is said to be haunted. How, you ask? Well, let me tell you a little story. In Lakovia, the last village of the Albanian region Bregu, with clear turquoise water and breathtaking beaches located downtown, you can find a small community of folks working and making a living within the community. The year was 1968. You had your local market for food and goods and your local church gatherings, which was at the time St. George. There had been an old soul among the church community who passed away, and the church community was to hold a service for that soul. As the church preparer prepared the body, an old man came in requesting that they wanted this cane to be buried with the casket, but not on the inside, on the outside, on top, so that he could walk with his creator when it was his time. The preparer agreed to do this and continued working. Early morning the next day, the priest asked the preparer of the body to go ahead and bury the casket before the actual service to save on time. In the midst of doing so, the preparer forgot the cane. Although he felt bad about not burying the cane, he didn't think it was a big deal. The preparer brought the cane back to the church where the service was taking place. As the people trickled in and service began as normal, you could hear a small thump then another thump, then another thump. An old lady leaned closer to the preparer and pointed at the cane saying, surprised he didn't want to be buried with that old stick. He put up a fuss every time he didn't have it. Dust began to fall from the ceiling. And then thump, crackle, thump. Everyone looked up and suddenly a loud rumbling followed by falling brick as the roof collapsed during the funeral service. The townspeople were surely convinced that this was a curse, abandoning the church, holding sermons outside. 